Chief Medical Officer of the Olympics says having the AIDS virus would not bar Magic Johnson from competing for the basketball gold medal. Now this. Here comes a small wonder. Here comes comfort for constipation. A laxative called Dulcalax. It's comfort coated. Dulcalax is the only leading overnight laxative that is. It's specially coated not to upset your stomach. And more doctors are comfortable recommending Dulcalax than other overnight laxatives for overnight relief. Try gentle, comfort-coated Dulcalax. Small wonder. On tonight's CBS Evening News, our Money Crunch report, how to pick your HMO, health maintenance organization. Dan Rather, see you then. This is CBS. Now at Kmart, get 60 portraits for $14.95. Whoa, Mom, look at this. Including even more big portraits. A big 10 by 13, four 5 by 7s, and four 8 by 10s. Four 8 by 10s. Plus a portrait ID card and 12 portrait Christmas cards. My own cards. So hurry to Kmart this week and get 60 portraits. Look, Mom, look. Including even more big portraits, all for only $14.95. Hey, Johnny, look at this. Oh, hi, Bob. Hi. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hi, Bob. Oh, hi, Bob. Hi again, Bob. Oh. Hi, Bob. Hello. It's the night of a thousand Bobs. Coming soon to TV8. Good afternoon. I'm Sue Mason with this TV8 news break. Dubuque police say an unlit cross was found early this morning near the home of a city council member. Officials say the grass had been set on fire and a can of flammable liquid was found nearby. The councilman, Don Dyke, is the only council member against plans to recruit minority families to Dubuque. TV8's Michelle Parker is in Dubuque, and she'll have more for us at 6. The sister and brother-in-law of comic Tom Arnold were in federal court in Des Moines this afternoon on drug charges. Floyd and Lori Stockdall are among 11 people accused of operating an interstate drug ring. We'll have more news next hour. We proceeded to get... Frisky. I can't believe I'm doing this. He was twice her age. We both felt like teenagers. Yet the question was raised. What sort of a slime bucket is he? Plus, he was there for her. He gave me an unconditional love that no one in my family's ever given me. But he had his own family. I wanted to tell her that I was married. Can they overcome the kindergarten cops? Will she give him the chance to choose? Find out on Love Stories. The couples appearing on the following program are real people, and their stories are told in their own words. They were interviewed separately and are watching their love story along with you for the very first time. Hi, I'm Christian Alfonso. Welcome to Love Stories. Today we have two great love stories to share with you. And the stories you're about to hear, they're real. Our first love story is about Steve and Karen. They met as friends and there was a 19 year age difference between them that really didn't seem to matter. That is until one night at a poker game when their relationship took a romantic turn. And she wasn't much at poker. So after staying there for 15 minutes, she went down and laid down and fell asleep on the sofa. They play poker up into the wee hours of the a.m. and the sun's starting to come up. They decide, well, they'd better call it quits and get some sleep. So Steve lays down on the floor, and somehow or another, he ends up with a pillow and a blanket. And she just kind of cuddled up under the blanket. And, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, we proceeded to get frisky. We were both scared to death. I think we both felt like teenagers when it was our first time you know well she's 20 at this time i'm 39 what's 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 happening what's wait a second wait a second should i be doing this scared um, us both it really did because we didn't go out again i mean officially on a date or anything for a long time do i want to deal with parents that'll see who is this guy with my young daughter um, what's, what, what sort of a slime bucket is he, you know? Why you know, can't he pick on somebody his own age? Uh, I'm also making, uh, career advancement and choices constantly. And, and, you know, do I, do I give up or do I risk that? Would she fit in 
with with um, uh, the corporate structure that I was dealing with. I had uh, one girlfriend who kept telling me, this is crazy, it's not going to work, this relationship is doomed. It took me about six months uh, before I got over my fears and anxieties of uh, uh, going out with her. And we just started dating ex exclusively. Um, I think we both sat back and allowed ourselves to realize and stop fighting. Stop fighting these stupid little voices. These Made me little feel good that, that this short little fat guy could have this nice, tall, attractive young woman with him. I was madly in love with him. How do I explain? Um, he was the best thing that ever happened to me. He was not somebody who expected anything from me. He wanted me to be me to the best. And about 60 days after we really started going out, I got another promotion. And this promotion required me to go to California. So he went ahead and accepted, and he moved the weekend. And by the time I'm getting on the plane, she's kind of a... Um, she's really broken up. She's pretty sad. She's bleary-eyed. Um, I'm, I'm, I have a hard time leaving. And I went back home, and I remember getting an envelope and going to the pillow and picking up all of his hairs off the pillow and putting them in the envelope to save him because it was all I had left. Except they did have plane tickets to come out the next month. And so. she came. And we spent two months together. We traveled. I've been waiting for him to ask that important question. That I think he should come live with me and we'll see, you know, see if we can get married. Let's, let's take it, our relationship a step further. Let's see. Bills and all these things are going off in my head. I mean, it's finally, I've waited so long to hear him say that. Life is kind of like the horses and reins. And I felt like I had, I had all the reins and, and life was just, just going forward and everything was moving up and happy. Karen returned to Atlanta to start making plans for her move to Los Angeles. When we come back, we'll find out what happens though when Steve has second thoughts about their life together in a new city. What's the worst part of treating your worst colds? A cold medicine that leaves me spacey. Oh, it's the cold medicine that can zonk me out. I hate that. It's like I'm off in the ozone somewhere. Grog. Spacey. Introducing Sudafed Severe Cold Formula. If it could help stop the cough and the fever, but not stop me from getting to work, that'd be great. First Sudafed Cough, Cold, and Flu Tablet, and it has nothing but maximum strength ingredients. All that and it won't knock me out? Perfect. New Sudafed Severe Cold Formula. Maximum strength without drowsiness. Ice Capades, presented by Legs Sheer Energy. That's excitement. That's spectacular. That's Yabba Dabba Doo, Scooby Doo, Yogi Bear, and the Flintstones, America's favorite cartoon characters from the world of Hanna Barbera, live on ice. It's hot. Ice Capades, presented by Legs Sheer Energy. Coming to Vets Auditorium November 27th through December 1st. Get your tickets today at the Vets Box Office and all Ticketmaster outlets. Consider this concept from Geno's. The pizza snack people. Pocket science. The pocket was a perfect place for your hand. Now your hand is a perfect place for a pocket. New Geno's Pizza Pockets. Jam full of zesty pizza filling and a delicious pocket-sized crust. These pockets defy logic by actually getting crispy in the microwave. You won't find that in just any pocket. Geno's Pizza Pockets. A crispy new pizza way to snack. There's a sense of excitement in the air. Can two-time winner Kirk Ditzler experience the sweet smell of success again? Watch as he sniffs out these categories. Perfume and cologne. Languages, nursery rhymes, and finally, Marco Polo. Match wits with the two-time champion, the health education director, and an editorial assistant. Challenge yourself to a game of Jeopardy. It's as much fun as you think. This Wednesday at 5, here on TV8. Back to Karen and Steve. Karen was two days away from joining Steve in Los Angeles when Steve decided he'd made a big mistake. I've done. I've made a commitment and, and, and set this whole thing in motion. And is this really what I want? Is this really uh, what my life's going to be? 
I get a phone call from Steve a couple of days before the movers come. And he says, well, I think after you get out here, get settled, get a job, maybe you need to find a place of your own. And that's I want her to go out and get an apartment to make sure that she is still interested in spending the rest of her life with me. You know, realize I am sacrificing everything here. I'm leaving my family. I am leaving my job. I am leaving Atlanta. I don't know California at all. I am sacrificing everything. I am leaving everything that I've got going on in my life in order to be with you. And now you're saying this, find a place of your own? To heck with that. The Either doubts, you know, here she is young. Um, she's 22, 23 at this point. You know, is she going to be, is she going to stay with me until I'm old and, well, I'm already gray, but is she going to stay with me, and, you know, throughout my life? Is she going to have my children? Is she going to be able to grow with me? And are we going to be able to grow together rather than growing apart? I can live by myself anywhere in the country. I don't have to go all the way to the other side of the country in order to live by myself. I can do that here. I can do that in Chicago. I can do it in Timbuktu. I don't, you know, that's not the point here. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not moving out there to live by myself. I'm moving out there to be with you. Is yeah. she going to be dependent on me uh, to support her? I, I, I'm not working. I'm not, I have nothing going on in my life. You know, uh, um, what's, what are the things that she's going to want? What are the things that she's going to need? Either you want uh, this relationship or you don't. You make up your mind. And I don't want to hear from you until you know for sure what you want. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I don't know what's going to transpire. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I was hysterical. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how could he do this to me? How could he do this to me? Karen was ready to change her whole life to be with Steve. And she couldn't understand his hesitation about a move to Los Angeles. We'll find out later if Steve changes his mind and is willing to give the relationship another chance. Coming up next, we'll meet our second couple, Lisa and Craig. So he took me home. And then we stayed in my room for four days. My wife pulled up in the car. And I hated him. Unconditional love, concealed, coming up next on Love Story. Would you like your home to look like this home? Let us mail you details of how ABC's seamless siding is helping owners across America turn their homes into beautiful show places. We'll show you how we make ABC siding on the job to perfectly fit the walls of your home with no waste and no ugly seams or splices. We'll tell you about our special services and products to treat your roof overhang, gutter, and downspouts. And we'll also tell you about our fine replacement windows, the perfect energy-efficient companion to new ABC seamless siding. Our replacement windows are energy efficient with double or triple glazing and high efficiency low E glass. Our heavy duty vinyl frames give you up to 36% more PVC than competitive windows. We offer a wonderful world of choice in custom made windows, traditional double hung windows, casement windows, sliding windows and beautiful bay and bow windows. Our windows are as convenient as they are efficient. All styles offer easy cleaning and are maintenance free. Our windows have been installed in thousands of homes and commercial buildings as well. These fine windows are a giant step ahead of all other windows. But because they are sold factory direct by your ABC seamless siding dealer, they are also affordable. Just weigh the facts. Our replacement windows are commercial grade, maintenance free and energy efficient. They are of certified quality and carry a lifetime limited warranty. Replacement windows from your ABC seamless siding dealer First in engineering, appearance, and performance. Hi, I'm Deb Johnson with ABC Seamless Siding. One of our best kept secrets is that we have thermal pane replacement windows. Are you tired of putting plastic on your leaky windows? Get rid of the plastic. Stop breaking your fingernails on those old storm windows. Call me today and set up a no-cost in-home demonstration. Operators are on duty 24 hours. So call now before the winter winds blow. Right now, I'd like you to meet our second couple, Lisa and Craig. 
Lisa was going through an awfully tough time in her life when she met Craig, who provided a sympathetic shoulder for her to lean on. But there was only one problem. Craig forgot to mention that he was married. And I was dating somebody, so I had a boyfriend. But he just wasn't there for me emotionally or mentally or anything else. He was too wrapped up in his own things. and Which was okay. That was fine with me because I, um, I was married. So. He so told that was... me that he wasn't married. He said that he was divorced and that his wife and children lived in Texas. You know, I would hold her hand, but I wouldn't kiss her. And, and um, you know, I never asked to spend the night. And I never, um, you know, that's not what I was looking for, even though later on... Um, I would have liked to, and it's not that I didn't think about it, but... Um, there was some chemistry, but I was just trying to fight it because of Robert, because of the guy that I was dating. I was just trying to fight any kind of um, draw to him. I wanted to keep it friends. I wanted to keep it simple. I, want, I needed somebody like him in my life, and I didn't need it complicated with the relationship at the time. Well, she was going through um, some problems, too. Her mother had died, and she was having a lot of problems. And there were things that I had already been through that that I was real helpful for her. You know, I understood what she was going through and I had a lot I couldn't of... deal with her death. I couldn't deal with anything. I couldn't... I, I'd be driving down the freeway and I'd get lost. I'd, I'd forget where I was going and I'd come out of this daze and, and it just got scarier and scarier. And I had to get my head together. I had to find out what was going on. Why was I so depressed? I thought I'd dealt with her death. I thought I was doing okay. I just thought I was losing my mind, basically. And when I went through it, I didn't have anyone there for me. Uh, my wife wasn't there for me, and, and, and uh, my family didn't live close enough, and they weren't there, and I went through it myself. And um, it makes it harder. It makes I didn't it realize how much I was trying to stuff my feelings. I went into the hospital for, for the depression afterwards, and Craig came to visit me every night. He was there every night, and Robert took off to Hawaii with his friends gone through a, a, a drug counseling thing at the same type of hospital kind of you know it's kind of the same thing so I had gone through that for um, 30 days myself and this was basically the same thing and I told her well there's a lot more to it you learn a lot more about life than you really could imagine when you go in there you know it's just it's you know, not you have your good time friends and you have your bad time friends well Craig was there for both he was there when I was happy and he was there when I was down and that's a lot to know that somebody's going to accept you unconditionally. Now that I started falling in love with her, I wanted to tell her that I was married. Because now I knew she had to know. And I wanted to tell her I was married. But she was going through a lot already. She was in the hospital, and I didn't think that was a good time. Craig and, and I were uh, talking on the phone, and I was in tears. I didn't know what to do. I said, you know, I have these feelings for you, and they're really strong, and I'm, I think I'm falling in love with you or I think I'm already in love with you I don't know but um, I was talking in the phone booth and uh, my wife pulled up in the car and she got out and you know she I goes this, somebody pick up the phone and and it was a woman and she said um, who is this and something like that and then clicked the phone went dead and and I called and I drove to another phone booth and called Lisa back and that's when I told her I said Lisa that was my wife I said I'm married and I hated him I couldn't stand him. I was pissed off at him. I wanted nothing to do with him. I just said, you know, I think everything, uh, everything, I had so much faith in you. I had so much faith in this relationship. And it seems like now I don't know what was real and what isn't after everything you said to me. And I thought you were my friend and I thought you cared about me. Yeah. And I forget how long it was. Um, I didn't see her again for a couple weeks or something like that or a month. I'm not sure. So that's when Craig came into the club on a Wednesday night, and I was drinking. And he um, he asked me how I was doing, and I said, I was doing fine. How are you doing? And he looked so, at me. Uh, we sat and talked for a long time. She was supposed to be working, and she ended up sitting down, and she just... Um, um, we he was upset. He was sad. He didn't want me to find out that way. He wanted to tell me, but he wanted to wait for the right time to tell me. And there was never a right time because I was always dealing with one roller coaster after another. As soon in as I short time that we knew each other, we'd gone through more than, than most people go through in their whole life with with, an, with a partner or a friend. And so he took me home, and then we stayed in my room for four days. We we didn't even want to get out of bed to go. <laughs> yep. Once he spent the night, he spent the first night with me, and he never went home. 
days Lisa and Craig spent together renewed their love. When we come back, we'll find out what happens when they move in together. For Sunday dinner, snacks, or quick fix meal, High V has tasty specials like these. Assorted pork chops, $1.18 a pound. Chicken of the sea, chunk light tuna, 49 cents. Swanson budget dinners, 88 cents. And imperial stick margarine, 48 cents. For savings all day, every day, shop High V. And low prices. and go for something more at Long John's. Beautiful holiday crystal. Just 69 or 99 cents with any meal. And Long John Silver's, you're gonna get your wish. Dolphins! Right now, try our batter dipped fish and chicken combo. Just $1.99. I've started my Christmas shopping early this year with these great toys from Walgreens. Only $14.99 each. This cheers and thrills basketball game has flashing lights and crowd noises. My little cowboy's going to love the realistic sounds this cute stick horse makes. And who can resist Fluffy Puppy? He walks and barks, too. I'm off to a great start. Thanks to Walgreens. For a lot more Christmas, just Walgreens. Back to Lisa and Craig. After everything they'd been through together, they were finally happy and together. But now that they've solved the problems in their lives, do they still need each other? Let's see. He may be in. I was crazy about him. I was crazy in love with him. And there he could do no wrong. I was just crazy about him. He's just a wonderful person. And when his kids moved in, I loved him. I got along great with them. I didn't expect they... that we were going to have the kids move in after about a year so we could have some time together. Um, but that didn't work out. And um, I brought the kids home with me. And we moved right in, and then things went, <laughs> things went real fast. It was just all too much. I was trying to give everything I had to the kids and to a new relationship and to my school. Well, when all that's dished out, what's left for me? There wasn't... And we both needed time to ourselves to think and, and to... Um, we needed time to be alone, and we also needed time to be together. And with the kids there, we didn't get either one. No quiet time. No quiet time, no time alone, no time off. I mean, you know, Chris would pick up the children on the weekends, but that wasn't enough. I still needed time for me. Not me and Craig, just me. We got engaged and I asked her to marry me because I wanted her to know that I, that I really loved her. I didn't want her to think that I was using her or um, that it was a matter of convenience or anything like that at all. I wanted her to know that in spite of everything that's going on and, and uh, that I really loved her and I really cared about her. And that, After uh, I got the ring, that's when everything, I started thinking about how permanent this was gonna be and how long, that's what I was saying, you know, it's gonna last a long time. Is this what you want? You wanna make a commitment? You wanna spend all this $10,000 on this wedding and, and commit to this man for the rest of your life? You know, all you during this time, we're both learning that, that, uh, that we needed time to recover from what we'd been through and to stop and think about it because that's what it what we had gone through before both of us you know of, of staying busy so that you don't have to think about what's going on and if you're too busy to stop and think about how you feel and what you're doing um things just happen instead of things that you plan and things that you want to happen all of a sudden our rock that was so strong for the last six or eight months is a little shaky now you know maybe this isn't what i want and he's thinking, geez, I left my wife, I, I've moved my kids in here, and now she's thinking, now maybe she doesn't want this. Yeah, it scared him. Yeah, it had to have. Any human. You know, two people can't be everything for each other. And that's what we were trying to do for each other. And it didn't work. We needed time. We needed to have our own separate lives. Lisa hardly had time to adjust to living with Craig, and his children moved in. We'll find out later if she's willing to give the relationship another chance. When we come back, we'll discover which couple resolved their problems and how they did it. Right after this. 
We've road tested the Fisher Price Pick Up and Go with the world's most inexperienced drivers. No other truck in history picks up like the Pick Up and Go from Fisher Price. Here, you ready to go on? No, my looks are so dry. Not anymore. Blistex ointment relieves dry lips fast because it's the only leading product that contains moisture for fast relief. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Blistex works fast. Bye, Daddy. No, you go ahead, honey. My throat really hurts. When your throat is sore and it's feeling raw, try Sucrets. Sucrets wraps your throat in soothing relief. Much better. Only Sucrets has the medicine diclinine to soothe minor sore throat pain for long-lasting relief. How about a bite to eat? Oh, not with this sore throat. When your throat's in pain, feel better again. Try Sucrets and wrap your throat in soothing relief. That does feel better. Sucrets wraps your throat in soothing relief. you eat and drink upsets your stomach. You want a medicine that works directly on your stomach itself. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, Pepto delivers powerful medicine directly to your stomach, right where you hurt. It's powerful relief. Pepto-Bismol. It's real medicine for your stomach. It's time now to see which couple resolve their problems and has a happy ending to their love story. Here are today's love stories again. First, Steve and Karen. Steve was 19 years older than Karen, and it didn't seem to bother them until Karen was about to move to Los Angeles to join Steve. Our second couple is Lisa and Craig. After losing her mother, Lisa was on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and Craig helped her through the crisis. But now, Lisa isn't sure they need to be together any longer. Have you guessed which couple gets back together? Well, you're right, if you guess Steve and Karen. I called her back and said, I want you to come out here. You know, it's time to start growing, putting things together, putting a life together. And the movers came and picked up my stuff, and I was out here before the end of the year. We I got married it. at a friend's house about... Oh, a year and a half later. And we realized that the age difference really is not that big a deal. And he does want to have kids. He does. He wants to have a son. Someone to carry on the family name. He's the last one to be able to do that, so... She makes me feel young. Um, more independent than I've ever felt probably in my life. Because there's that understanding, there's that caring. Steve have now been married for almost a year and Steve's career once again is back on track and what about Lisa and Craig well we know they didn't get back together but let's see if they're still a part of each other's lives I think um, we're better friends than than, than, uh, than we were lovers yeah it's hard to be best friends and lovers at the same time because then who do you have to talk to about who you're in love with? So. <laughs> I needed my mom and she wasn't there. She was gone and Craig was there and he gave me an unconditional love that no one in my family has ever given me. None of my friends have ever given me. No, I've never received from anybody in my life ever, since or before. It hurts to... to um... You feel like you're losing something, you know, you're, you feel like you're losing a part of your heart. But, um, really in the long run, you're not. I need to spread my wings. I need to get out of the nest. I need to start walking on my own and flying on my own now. You know, I can't hide under his wing forever, which I wanted to do. I wanted to just hide under his wing and let him take care of me, but I can't let that happen. Lisa was grateful for the love and support Craig gave her but she hopes he understands that she needs to experience her independence. I'm Christian Alfonso, hoping your love story ends as happily as Steve and Karen's. I was an executive. But he was a horny man, too. And they found ecstasy at the office. I was one hot little woman. But he was working double shifts. I got caught. And she was a friend of mine. Plus, he loved her lips. This one lady knows how to kiss. Until they talked back. 
It brings out another person to me. He's kind of violent. Can he keep her from resigning their romance? Will she kiss off his terrible temper? Find out on Love Stories. place in Louisiana just outside New Orleans. They call it the plantation country of Baton Rouge. Louisiana, we're really cooking. Give us a call. In Ottumwa, tune to Channel 23 for better reception of TV8. Welcome to Love Connection. <laughs> 